Hey, what's up, my nerdy little friends? When I dried myself off this morning, I reached for my can of classic Brute spray deodorant and noticed it was completely empty. Your boy was without his scent, his brand. That's how the ladies know that the stallion is just around the corner. But I was all out. And they don't carry Brute Classic just anywhere. I had to make the pilgrimage out to Walmart. While I was there, I picked up two cans of Brute just in case. Then I remembered, Walmart has a couple of exclusives that I want right now. So that only means one thing. I put on my hunting shorts and declared open season mother And there it was, the Rock and Sock Connection. This is a two-pack of The Rock and Mankind during one of the best eras of the WWE. Instantly, instantly recognizable as them if you would take it out of the box. And I don't believe there's an actual Mankind Funko Pop. This is the first one. There's a Mick Foley, but this is Mankind. And he looks really good. And luckily, I was able to find this one in great condition. They had three or four of them there. Three of them were, I wouldn't say unacceptable, but definitely not collector grade. Uh, little, like, nicks here and there, like the this bent forward. Just little nicks and, you know, little corners bent in. But this one was pretty good. You know, that's one of the things about Walmart is it's hard enough to find their exclusives. And then on top of that, you got to find one in good shape. Um, so it definitely feels satisfying when you hunt and get what you want at Walmart. And this is one of my favorite two packs now. Just looks really good. Now I was also looking for the Macho Man with the checkered sunglasses, but struck out on that one. But I did find this John McClane. It's the one where he's running on the glass and his feet are bleeding. Really nice action pose on this one. Face is kind of plain, right? But they got the scarring right. Or not the scarring, but the wounds right. And a pretty memorable scene when he runs across the glass like that. They did a good job conveying that in the pop. And yeah, this one's going to look good with my, the rest of my Die Hard pops. I have all of them. Um, Al Powell, though, that box came in really wrecked in the mail, so I want to replace that one. And I want to say that the original, just the common John McClane, is going up in price. Um, I imagine they're not going to make too much more of him. And out of all of them, honestly, because I think there's another exclusive of him somewhere else. I forget exactly where, but I do think the common is the nicest one. Out of all the John McLeans. Yeah. Also only had one where the box was, I would say, pretty good condition. Um, there is a little, you know, it doesn't feel uh, case fresh anymore, but there's no major damage on it. The other ones that they had there, um, I believe they had two other ones. One of them was pre-wrecked, and then another one was missing a sticker. Um, not that... <laughs> I like the Walmart sticker, it's actually pretty ugly, but you know, I'm an inbox collector, so I do want to have it complete. But yeah, pretty happy to find this one as well. I have a couple of more pops that I'll unbox. They're uh, mail call pops at the end of the video. Just gonna go through all the other stuff I picked up at Walmart. 
Because, yeah, I spent a good chunk of the day uh, buying a bunch of toys. Now, these figures, I was pretty unfamiliar with. I had seen this guy before. I want to say at the Go Calendar store. Um, But the box was pretty messed up. But I did like the figure itself. I want to say this is, I don't know, maybe about five inches tall. B-S-T-A-X-N. Um, kind of odd. I, I could have swore I thought that was Bandai at first, but it's not. Um, it's actually Loyal Subjects. Um, if you remember them, they used to do like blind boxes and stuff of some very highly articulated um, uh, mystery figures like Ninja Turtles and things like that. Um, they're actually pretty nice. And this has got a surprising amount of articulation as well for a small figure like this. But yeah, um, I kind of like the look of these. I like the packaging as well. And it's pretty random what they had. I believe they had a Naruto as well. Um, the robot from Full Metal Alchemist. And then they also had uh, Lightning from Big Trouble in Little China. And then when I looked online, I saw that they make Slash too. Um, I think Ozzy Osbourne pretty random. I think they had a Gandalf there as well. Um, so I'm not sure how many licenses they hold, but I can see these being highly collectible. And at only $14.99 or maybe $15.99, pretty affordable for a highly articulated, fairly nice in a nice packaging. Um, it's a very nice figure overall. Now, I also picked up this Dry Bones from World of Nintendo. World of Nintendo figures aren't that hard to come by um, if you're looking for Mario, Toad, Luigi, etc. Some of the bad guys are, though. And this Dry Bones, I want to say in the past couple of months, I have not seen one except for this guy. And luckily... He was in good shape. I actually didn't pick this one at Walmart. I picked this one up at Target. I stopped by at Target as well. Um, but they didn't have the brute. So I had to go to Walmart. But yeah, this Dry Bones in a fairly nice package. Really nice figure. These ones are $10. Bucks, um, a little overpriced. I feel like these figures are pretty small. But, you know, it's Nintendo. It's expensive. Also at Target, I found Luigi in the P-Wing with the cloud glider. The clouds have a face on there. Pretty nice little figure. These are about six bucks. Um, but yeah, this is the one I needed to complete my gliders. I have all six now. Um, I had this one already, but I hadn't noticed that either I bought it damaged or I damaged it somehow. But a lot of cracks down here on the bottom. Ended up giving that one away. But now I have this one in pristine condition for my collection. Now back to Walmart. I was actually able to complete two more Hot Wheels sets that I really like. That have been actually very difficult to find in store. And that is the Muppet set. I was missing Kermit. And here he is on the classic Nomad. And these aren't the premium Hot Wheels. These are, I believe, $1.30. Um, but pretty nice. And I also picked up Gonzo in the 32 Ford. Probably one of my favorite styles of Hot Wheels is the 32 Ford. Very nice. And this completes my set of the Muppets. I also have... I already had these ones that I had picked up randomly at Walmart, but was never able to pick up the whole set. There's Fonzie on the cool one. Probably my least favorite of the set. My second favorite, though, is Miss Piggy in the custom Volkswagen Beetle. Very nice. Pretty metallic pink on that. And Miss Piggy, I feel, is the hardest one to find. Um, when I first saw these, they had these three and a couple of Miss Piggies. But now, I don't see her anywhere. And I think Kermit's actually pretty hard to find, too. These three are more common, especially this one. And it's probably because it's in a fantasy car. The Ground FX. 
But, you know, it's animal. It's animal's hilarious. I actually have the animal flocked pop as well. It's one of my favorites. But yeah, was able to complete this set at Walmart and that made me pretty happy. You know, and as I was looking through the Hot Wheels, there was a kid there with his mom. I want to say the kid was like maybe six or seven. And he just starts asking me like, you know, what's your favorite car and all that stuff? And what kind of car do you drive? And I was just like, oh, hey, buddy, you know, and kind of talk to him a little bit. Although deep down inside, I was like totally embarrassed. I was like, oh, man, look it. I'm a grown ass man buying Hot Wheels, <laughs> doing the exact same thing that uh, like a seven year old kid is doing, uh, looking through the Hot Wheels. Honestly, I feel like the mom probably thought it was a slow adult or something, but I don't care because I also found this Skeletor in the 70s van. And these guys, I want to say, have been just as hard to find as those um, Muppet ones. Because they aren't like the fantasy cars or anything. Um, I really like the ones where it's just the classic kind of Hot Wheels styles that are branded with these pop culture characters. And this is one of the premium ones. So I believe these ones are around five bucks, 550 or so. But yeah, 70s Van Skeletor. And that completed my set of the He-Man ones, which also include probably my least favorite, this Mercedes-Benz Unimog. Looks like a garbage truck. Least favorite of the set for sure. Now this one, Evil Lynn on the Chevy panel van. Well, that's not a van. Whatever that car is called. Um, did they call it an SUV back in 55? I don't know. But I think it's got a really cool, unique color. And I really like the way Evil Lynn looks there on the side. Nice packaging, of course. And the Volkswagen panel bus with, what's this guy's name? Beastmaster? I think it's Beastmaster. Beastor, some shit like that. But anyway, I thought this one looked really nice as well. Something about these 80s graphics on these vans that look really, really cool. My uncle actually in the 80s had a big van and on the side of it, he had a gigantic mural, but it was a, a cockfighting, you know, like the roosters. It was the most, I don't know, the most Mexican ass thing you've ever seen in your life. But it was awesome. I love that man. I wish he still had. I wish I would have been able to buy it from him because it's just you don't see you don't see stuff like that every day. Um, cop magnet for sure. But I just thought that was hilarious. And th and this really reminds me of it because that van was blue. And finally, the bread box. I forget her name. Does it say it on the back? Serpentita, something like that. I can't remember. But it's on the bread box model. Also a very unique color on this one. But yeah, found that Skeletor to complete this set as well. And the last Hot Wheel I bought is Princess Daisy. And this is one of the fantasy cars inspired by the character. But I think it's a really nice one. I don't usually like these. I mean, look how ugly these are. I mean, they're pretty ugly. I like the Bullet Bill one just because it looks like Bullet Bill, but it's elongated, so even that doesn't look that great. But I think this one with Princess Peach on here and the gold chrome interior, the yellow, the nice wheels, I just think this one is actually designed pretty well. And she's very, very hard to find. Um, I've seen these several times over the past few months, but not her specifically. Probably because it's her first appearance, so everybody wants this one. But yeah, it, it was weird at this Walmart, actually, because they didn't have any of the other ones. Um, usually it's the other way around. You see all the other ones, but you don't see her. This time, it was just her on the peg, none of the other ones. The Walmart shelves were actually kind of empty all around, um, but... This one here, I don't know, it was like Destiny. It was weird. 
Hard to find figure just waiting for me. Hard to find car, I mean. Now back to Target, where I found a chase, but not a Funko Pop chase. I found the Keith Lee Chase. One of my favorite wrestlers going on right now. Big, agile, strongman. Really, really super entertaining matches with Keith Lee. If you don't know who he is, go check him out on YouTube. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, look up one of his full matches and you'll see why this guy is so entertaining. I think this is the kind of talent that the WWE should put in WrestleMania. Um, not the same old tired stuff. Keith Lee is who should be at WrestleMania, in my opinion. So this is a chase. The common has black attire. This one has the light gray with the pink. Um, I believe he wore this against Randy Orton, I want to say. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. But found the chase. And this figure looks pretty good. I think the head scan looks nice. They really got his size down. I like that he comes with his entrance. Like little sleeveless sweatshirt thing there. You got some extra hands. And he's a chase. It always feels good to find a chase. And I picked up one more Mattel Elite from the Legends line. One of my favorite wrestlers as a kid. I loved the heels. And that is Razor Ramon. Basically a white man doing a Latino face. But, you know, I don't care. I don't get offended by this stuff. I'm Hispanic myself. I loved Razor Ramon. I mean, when he do stuff like, uh, like, like flick a toothpick at a kid, you know, it's just so funny. Like, they don't make heels like Razor Ramon anymore. And this figure really looks good. Look at the head scan on that. Really very nice. Mattel makes some really nice action figures. Doesn't have very many accessories, just some extra hands. But yeah, really, really nice one. Say hello to the bad guy. <laughs> Dripping with class. Sure. Oozing machismo, that's for sure. But yeah, happy to pick up this one at Target. And that was it for the non-Funko toys. But I do have a couple of shipments. Now this right here is from GameStop. They've definitely improved their shipping from six years ago when I started collecting Funko Pops. Now I'm not really worried about buying from GameStop because they usually come in mint. They do use these sorters though. They have this gap here. And I've gotten several pops where for some reason the guy packing it decides to just put his big fat thumb in there. Uh, not from GameStop though. This is Eddie Guerrero, one of the most awesome wrestlers, technically gifted. And Funko did a pretty decent job on this guy. I would have liked a little bit more of a mullet going on like Eddie Guerrero has, but maybe this is not from the mullet era. Yeah, it's not. But it would have been funny. But what I do like about this one is how barrel chested Funko made him because that's one of the things man Eddie, Eddie Guerrero had a big old chest and shoulders and everything um almost looked disproportionate man that guy was very very strong I think Funko conveyed that pretty well and yeah came in mint condition so good job GameStop Now this is from eBay, and this is a pop that's becoming increasingly hard to find. I kind of snoozed on it like a dummy. Um, I knew I wanted these, but I don't know, I just thought they weren't going to be so scarce so quickly. And then it's Jeff Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He was just kind of loose in that box with no protection. But he seems all right. No crease here. Kind of an odd bowing here. But, you know, once I put that in a protector, stack a couple pops on top. That'll flatten out. 
I really like that Funko made his nose a little bigger than they do on the Pops. Usually the human Pops all have a pretty uniform nose. But if you look at that, they made it big like Sean Penn's nose. And yeah, I remember the first time I watched Fast Times at Ridgemont High, I wasn't even that familiar with Sean Penn. And I do remember how like big his nose looked in that movie. And uh, Funko did that pretty good. This is, I believe, from when he's having like a dream sequence and he's thinking about um, uh, winning a surfing championship and the guy's interviewing him and he just goes, dude, where'd you get that jacket? Like, he's just like stoned, right? Um, I also want to get the one where he's holding the pizza and he's wearing the checkered vans. Um, but that one's becoming very hard to find, a little pricey. And these ones didn't come out very long ago. Um, like I always tell you, don't sleep on the comments like I did. I ended up paying a grand total with shipping 17 bucks for this guy. So nothing insane, but I do believe that the Spicolis are eventually going to hit that 40, $50 mark. Not sure how fast, but they don't seem to be, um, overproduced at all. Trophy looks really good too. And one final item, obviously not a pop. This is from eBay. I paid, I believe, 10 bucks for this, which is way too much. Makes me nervous. A little dusty, <laughs> obviously sitting in a collector's, uh, probably storage for a while. Not too bad, actually. The card's not bent. A little softness on this corner here. But, you know, I'm not even exactly sure when this came out, but it's definitely not new. You know, any Hot Wheels experts out there, if you can let me know where on here I can look for the actual year, or if there's a way to tell somehow. But yeah, um, really love pinup art. I love the packaging on this one, and the car is very nice as well. American Beauty on the Dream Van. Now, this is a premium, so originally it would have sold for 5 I believe this guy was selling it for $4.99 or $5.99, $4 shipping. Whatever it was, it came out to $10, 11 So, double the price, but, you know, you got to ship things. So, you know, it's not like you're going to be able to find this one for 5 bucks on eBay anyway, and you're not going to find it for retail anymore. So, yeah, I paid double what the price is of this. But I'm not too worried about it. It's one I really wanted. Looks really good. It's very unique. It's just awesome. Really awesome packaging. Alright guys, so as you can see, I'm not just about Funko Pops. I do like a well-made action figure. Cowboy Bebop is one of my favorite shows of all time, not just anime. I love Cowboy Bebop. I honestly believe it's the best anime you can show somebody that's not an anime fan to try to get them to watch anime with you. Overall, very successful hunt for me. Found some pretty hard to find Hot Wheels, completing sets. Was able to get that first Mankind Funko Pop. Found a Chase WWE Elite. Honestly, one of the best hunt days I've had in a while. Very hard to pick what my favorite item is. Maybe that Razor Ramon. Maybe the Rock and Sock Connection. Alright guys, let me know in the comments below what else you collect besides Funko Pops. Very curious to know what you give a once over at the stores after you look at the shitty Funko Pop selection and move on to the next thing. Alright guys, thanks for watching and take it easy. Yeah.